welcome everyone and, and welcome to our last week of our return to study short course. So this evening we're going to have a look at some uh, online resources and some other resources that we've touched on a little bit last week that will help you on your uh, journey through university, either uh, finding out information on uh, whether to start or how to start or what to start and then once you get there how to progress through. So start off with why might you need help? Very important question to be able to answer. Uh, and all of these particular issues are things that you may need assistance with. So for, for uh, initially you may uh, need advice on what sort of course or subject that you may wish to uh, begin or your course of study. This could be, um, <clears throat> for instance, you may be in a, a job uh, position already where you would like to upgrade your skills to go to the next level. You need to be able to know what course uh, to take in order to be able to do that. Once you've started a course of study, you may also need guidance on specific subjects, mainly electives. Usually once you start a course, the structure is all set out and your core subject are there uh, and detailed for you. There's plenty of information on those, although we'll show you how to find that as well. But sometimes it's good uh, to have some advice uh, to forewarn you before you start each semester in terms of uh, the type of content, the type of assessments, and the expected hours, contact both contact hours and study hours that you may be expected for each course or subject. If you've got problems with study or assessment, so it could be just getting into the click of studying again, if it's been a while since you've done it or if you're new to it, um, particularly if you're coming straight from high school, then there's quite a big difference between uh, studying at, at secondary level and studying at tertiary level, it's a lot more autonomous and you need to have very good time management skills as we spoke about in a couple of the earlier weeks um, and you need to be able to uh, make sure that you keep your, your tasks on track and there's a lot of start, there's a lot of assistance around providing you with mechanisms and skills to be able to do that. Same with assessments as Chantel um, touched on in week three. Uh, there are different, oops, gone too far, sorry. There are different types of assessments and some of them you may never have come across before. So it's often good to be able to know where you can go to get help on either writing an essay or referencing or how to structure a lab report or whatever the assessment may be that you're looking at. Uh, there can also be language barriers, particularly in an online learning environment um, where geographical boundaries are no obstacle to people studying uh, no matter where they are. Uh, if English is not your preferred language or if you're studying at a foreign university um, which doesn't have, uh, is non-English speaking, then there's going to be lang language barriers. There can sometimes be cultural related language barriers. So in Australia we use certain types of slang and certain white mannerisms in our speech that don't always make sense to people from other countries. So those language barriers, and, and that, you know, goes across all languages in all countries. So it's very important that you have that sort of uh, assistance to be able to get you through those things that you're not quite sure about. Financial hardship is another one. If you are uh, having trouble uh, with the costs surrounding university, there's uh, things you can do to uh, alleviate that or to help with that. There's things available through tertiary education systems that allow you to deal with those sorts of things. But it's very dependent on the course, the university, which country you're residing in, your local rules and laws and regulations. So that's something that probably not going to have a look at in too much detail here other than to show you where you can go to be able to find information about that. Work-life balance is another one that uh, people struggle with and that, that can tie into, as we said before, problems with study. So being able to find that nice, finely tuned balance between your study your own work obligations and your family life and your your R&R, &R, your rest and recuperation. All of that is really, really important. None of those particular facets of your life will be successful if you tend to spend too much time on the others. So you've got to find a nice, evenly matched balance. And there's counsellors and um, advisors that can help you work that sort of stuff out. Distance and isolation can be an issue for some people. Um, particularly in a remote learning environment, uh, it may be that you might be the only person for 
hundreds of miles around that's even remotely connected to your particular course and so you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, <clears throat> or alternatively you could be completely isolated uh, from any contact or, or anything other than email or webinar type contact and that can make things really really difficult. You need to be a good self-starter, you need to know when to ask for help and you need to know where to go to ask for help and so we'll look at those. And then lastly, uh, a quick look at academic skills and some of the issues around that and where you go to find help for that as well. And then right at the end, I'm going to hand over to uh, a co-presenter, uh, Neil, who's been with us all along, ghosting in the background, and he will provide you with some additional information which uh, you'll find very valuable. So who can help? So we know what we may need help with. Who can provide us with help? In terms of online environment, uh, the CSU, the Charles Sturt Uni website in this particular case is your first point of contact and that uh, goes for whatever university you may be attending or thinking of going to. There are a number of, a number of websites, so if I have a look. So this is our first, this is basically our front page for Charles Sturt University. There's a number of different options here which will allow you to find the information that you're looking for. <clears throat> so this, as a new student, someone potentially thinking about joining university, if you were to go to, if you wanted to go to Charles State University, this would be the first place that you would look. And you could see both along the top here, and if we scroll down, there's information that is going to be relevant to you depending on where you're coming from. So if you're a school leaver, can find out more studying for your first degree. Now that, that applies um, even if you're not a direct school leaver, so it could be that you've just been working for uh, a long period of time or a period of time, haven't got a tertiary uh, qualification. In the per for the purposes of this particular uh, website or page, then you would be classified as a school leaver, so you'll still find you're studying for your first degree, that's where you'd go to have a bit of a look for a start. Uh, undergrad, undergraduate studies, so, oh, here we go, so if you return to a study after a break or you want to change careers, okay, this is, you would click on this link here and go off and find out information about uh, how you would begin that process. As a postgraduate student, so a postgraduate student is someone that's already got a degree in something, whatever that is, and you want to take that study further. So it could be you want to do a, a master's degree, either via coursework or research, you might want to do an honours degree, you may want to start off the process of going towards PhD if you are already got a master's, research master's or honours degree. And there's a specialised area here for international students that will give you information that you need as an international student because that can be very different uh, to local students. Again, you can see that these links are also available across the top of the page. Now, all universities are set up very similar. Uh, you can also click straight on the course link. Which will then take you to a searchable area where you can either click on courses of interest based on the particular area, specific area, or if you're not really quite sure and you just want to do a search on key terms, you can do that also through here, selecting the level, whether you're preparing for university study, undergraduate, honours, postwork, postgraduate by coursework or research, where you would like to study. Um, in the main, uh, if you are going, if you are uh, off campus, I will leave that blank, uh, study mode on campus, online or international. So they're the options for you to choose. Uh, as you can see, there's a bucket load of courses that you can pick from and the vast majority of these have online and international options. Some of them will also require you to attend um, local schools or local um, camps, if you like, for uh, resident schools for a period of, uh, usually it's done over a week, uh, towards just before the start of a semester or a session uh, and you would be expected to attend for a week and do your block mode 
uh, block mode subjects in that um, particular time frame. So a good example of that is psychology. So there's a fourth year in psychology, graduate diploma in postgraduate diploma in psychology that you can do, and that requires you to turn up for a week at the start of each semester to do block mode intensive for the particular course subjects that you would be enrolled in for that course. Um, another example of that is the exercise in sports science, particularly clinical exercise and phys physiology, where you would need to uh, attend uh, block mode camps as well uh, to provide the uh, practical assessment component of your particular course. Other courses, uh, general business, um, communications, uh, banking and finance, computing, some of most of these courses don't have that particular requirement. You don't, you might not have an actual requirement to attend campus, but uh, particularly allied health and anything that requires practical component will generally require you to attend at some stage. So if we just quickly, uh, if we have a look at the difference, if we just have a quick have a look at the undergraduates. So again, it allows you to search for a degree, not to the same uh, level as what you could on the previous page. It'll give you information about campuses, services and support, the CSU online learning environment, so on and so forth. So it gives you a little bit of a leader into what uh, university life might be like. Um, similar to postgraduate as well, slightly different links. Talk about workplace learning and the study options that you can use. Uh, a little bit different, but similar sort of information available no matter where you go. Uh, there is also the Ask CSU website. Uh, so this allows you to ask the CSU, uh, the Ask CS, the allows you to ask the Ask CSU team any number of questions. So um, you can make an online inquiry where they'll get back to you. You can search through a knowledge base of frequently asked questions or frequently requested information uh, to find out answers to particular questions that you may have either regarding study, graduation, timetables, exams, uh, specific topics which may have frequently asked questions, so on and so forth. So there's lots of different, if we just have a look at, so the hot articles there, it'll give you an idea of the sorts of things that you can have a look at there. If we just wait patiently. All right, maybe not. Doesn't want to load this evening. All right. Let's go search term. Don't you just love live technology? <clears throat> Okay, something's not quite right at the moment. Or oh, we can have a look at our knowledge base. Ah, uh, there you go. Best laid plans. Okay, all right. So the general point of that last slide was just simply that first port of call is always the main website or the Ask CSU site to be able to search knowledge base or make online inquiries. So they're your two main your main points of call initially. In terms of your academic skills, there are a number of things that you need to keep in mind. Um, so learning skills, so three, three key things are the learning skills which basically allow you, provide you with information on learning strategies that are going to help you progress through your tertiary study. Skills that will allow you to manage the process of writing essays or reports or other assessments, whatever that, whatever they may be, even you know walking you through uh, how to approach practical assessments, exams, um, develop and refine analytical and critical reading skills. And because we, we spoke about that early on in the course in the MOOC about um, being critical of what you read. So it doesn't mean being critical as in always saying, no, this is wrong, but thinking about it in a way that makes you ask questions of what the author might be writing and what they might be saying. 
try to work out what it is they're, they're trying to say and, and see whether it fits with your own experiences and with your own general knowledge. Some techniques to improve your exams, uh, your exam performance, if depending, some of us, are, I mean, for instance, I love exams, I don't mind them at all, I'd be quite happy to do exams as 100% assessments all the time, um, but I know a lot of people get jittery about exams and find them very nerve-wracking, so uh, it's important that you, you learn not only the techniques that will help you to focus and concentrate on the exam when you're actually in it, so making sure that you're reading the question properly, that you understand uh, how many marks are allocated to each question, understand what the different question types are and how you would go about answering them. But more importantly, how to improve your psychological preparation. So how to maintain your level of calmness, control your nerves, control your anxiety. Um, that's probably one of the biggest problems that a lot of students have. Uh, you also provide advice on enhancing academic language and your learning skills. So your academic language is uh, basically the way you write. So in this particular context, the way you would put together an essay or a report. Okay, so there's a certain academic style of writing, which we briefly touched on, that you need to be able to deliver on. It's not like academic uh, reports or essays are certainly not like writing a business report or writing a prospectus or writing a letter. There's very different types of languages, very different types of structure uh, behind those. And so there's lots of advice and places you can go to be able to find that, and we'll have a look at those in a minute. Uh, and again, importantly, using your study time efficiently and effectively. So first of all, being able to divide up what your uh, priorities are, equally between all your life roles as a parent or a, or a brother or a sister or a spouse or a worker or a sports person or whatever it is that you do with your life. You need to be able to find that balance. And any time that you have for your study, you need to be able to use it efficiently and effectively. So it would be no good you know, say, okay, well, I have a block of three hours on a Wednesday to do my study. That's what I'm going to do. And then you sit there and you read the same three or four pages over and over again, or you quickly get distracted from a task and start surfing the internet or you turn the telly on to provide some distraction or you go and make a cup of tea or whatever the case may be. You need to make sure that you've got the skills and the ability and the focus to be able to use that three hour block as an example effectively and efficiently to get the work done that you need to have done in that time period. Because if you don't then it'll start leaching and reaching into other areas of your life. Uh, math, math skills may be important depending on the course that you're going into. Okay, there are various bridging courses that you can do um, previously if you either don't have the science or uh, mathematical background or it's been a long time since you've done it. There are uh, bridging courses that you can do to make up that difference in standard of what you may know to where you need to get for uh, first year tertiary education. And then ESL support as well, so English as a second language support. So if we just whip back to our web page, uh, that's this one, our study support. Um, so this one is particularly relevant for international students. And you can see it uh, provides learning skills as we've spoken about, math skills, you can attend workshops. Uh, if you're local, if not, you can get remote uh, support as well. You can get help with specific maths or stats problems, strengthen your math skills, upgrade to make sure your skills are right for uh, basic prerequisites for first year university, and also English support as well. This, this is probably, all of these are really important, but English is your English knowledge and ability to write uh, a good assessment is obviously really important. Um, English can be a real barrier at times, particularly with the international students, and it can make uh, things that's usually taken into account by lecturers and mentors. We understand that not everyone has the same um, command of English if it's not your primary language, but there's ways and means to get assistance to be able to help you improve in that particular area should you need to. The library, okay, this is a big one. Once you've actually started, if I can get back to the page again, once you've actually started your study, you've found out information about your course, you've applied, you've gone through uh, your study support options, 
and you've actually started studying, the library is your one-stop shop or your first stop for all your research, all your materials. Um, we spoke about Interact 2 last week, which is your portals for your actual, which is the web portal for your actual online subjects, and all of your content will be provided by your lecturers slash mentors in that particular area. However, for research, um, for libguides, for ebooks, for researching journal databases, whatever tools you need, the uh, library website is that one-stop shop. So if we have a look, let's just open up a couple of pages here. Uh, so Google, Google Scholar is also a popular one. Um, so from here you can borrow, if you're a remote student, you can still borrow from the library. You can search their catalogue through this particular search page, the Primo search, um, and you can get those shipped out to wherever you are in, in the majority of cases. Not always, there's some restrictions on that, but in the majority of cases you can have text sent out to you. Um, you can renew your loans online, send books back in the post when you're finished. It's all nice and straightforward, works like a well-oiled machine. So if, for example, <clears throat> two, two places that are useful. So the first one in terms of research is your journal databases. Um, now, I'm not logged in as a student here. We're just looking at this from a, a public perspective. But there are a number of databases that you can search for uh, journal articles, for books, for any sort of web resource, for videos, for um, other online resources. Uh, your first stop is here, so journal databases where you have, you can browse by subject, you can either browse by subject, browse by title, or you can then select the database. Now all of these databases listed in this drop down list box are subscribed to by the university. So if you have a university account, you can get full access to anything that these particular uh, online databases have access to. So it's extensive, very, very extensive. Um, and you can, by default, uh, when you search the journal database engine with your Promo search, uh, which was back here, that's also here, so you can search all books, journals, DVDs and more, or just articles, now your search. Um, they will search all of these databases by default. But you can also say, for instance, say that you, well, I'm doing psychology, so I'm going to have a look at EBSCOhost. You can go there directly. Ah, of course, as my, my account doesn't have access to that particular one. So as a student, you'll have access to that database and you can go straight off to that database and then do uh, searches for whatever resources that you're sort of after, whether it's academic papers for your research, whether it's a text, whether it's other online resources, as may be instructed by your lecturer or mentor. The other really good spot to start as well is the library resource guides. So these are related specifically to your course or your um, or your school. So say for instance, let's have a look at exercise and sports science. If we were to have a look at this particular libguide here. So this libguide is specific for exercise and sports science. So any searching you do here, any, any, anything in this particular area will be specific to exercise and sports science. Um, your lecturer, depending on the subject and depending on your course, your lecturer will also provide you with a link directly to a libguide which will set out any um, recommended journal articles, books or other online resources that the lecturer may have set, lecturer or mentor may set for your particular subject. So let's see, there wasn't too much on that one. Let's see what else we've got. Okay. Yeah. All right, if we look at reference resources. So these are particular resources that are specific for 
an IT course. Okay, so everything in these lib guides, journal databases, okay, these are all rel um, relevant to your particular course. So it's a good way of being able to say, okay, I'm doing this course, these are the resources I need access to rather than just going through your general Primo search. You can still do a general Primo search through um, the library websites over here. That's still fine. If you type whatever you want into there, you will still get some sorts of, you'll still get resources, you'll still get results. But if you want to drill straight down, sorry, if you want to drill straight down on whatever it is that you're looking for, uh, then best port of call is go straight to your libguide and that will give you a perfect segue into whatever it is you're looking for. So again, if we have a look at exercise science, journal databases, again, you can see they're different to the ones we just saw for the IT, IT pages. Number of web resources as well. So lots and lots of web resources. And these are, um, and these are lovingly uh, put together by the brilliant library staff. Uh, who are experts, so there'll be a single, um, there'll be a resource librarian for each particular area. So if you're on campus or you call the university or call the library or you email the library, you actually can get through to a specific resource librarian who's allocated your particular course. So they will have specific knowledge in that area to be to help you along the way. So if you don't find what you're looking for, either through the Red Guide or through the Primo search here, you can contact the library directly and they will be able to provide you access to a human resource uh, who will have specific knowledge in your area of expertise in terms of being able to point you in the right direction. So they're not going to necessarily be able to answer your questions, but they'll be able to point you in the right direction and tell you where to go. Uh, there's also links for study support and for researcher um, support as well. So lots of different information there uh, to assist you in all facets of your study for your particular course. In terms of career counselling, there are career development workshops, work experience and placements uh, for some courses, so for instance uh, allied health courses, so exercise science, nursing, paramedics, um, dentistry, any of those sort of courses that you may do, irrespective of which university you're at, uh, will require you to go on either some form of work experience or placement in order to gain your qualification. Uh, the university, it, once you're enrolled as a student, the university will organise that for you the vast majority of the time. There are some circumstances at some universities where you can choose to undertake your own placement. Maybe uh, it could be at your own workplace or it could be at a workplace that you've recently gained employment um, at while you've been going through your course. But keep in mind that there is usually a fairly strict uh, process to go through in order to able to make sure that whatever work placement you're doing aligns with the objectives and requirements of your course. So there's a bit of red tape there if you wanted to uh, do your own placements or work experience, um, but there is uh, the possibility of being able to do that in some courses at some universities. So I would advise you, if you want to do that, to check that uh, with your current um, with a course coordinator or subject coordinator that you happen to be enrolled in. There are also career development officers who will assist you in writing job applications. And in fact, in some courses, particularly in the last year, uh, that may actually be accessible content where you have to actually write a job application for your particular area of endeavour. Uh, they can assist you with resume or CV writing. Again, that can sometimes be tied up with assessment, the job applications. Uh, interviewing techniques, so uh, on two fronts there, so techniques uh, for you to be able to interview people and also, more importantly, in this particular context is how to be how to successfully navigate the interview process, particularly if you haven't done it before, if you're inexperienced in um, going to job interviews, it can be quite uh, quite nerve-wracking for a start. Um, there are a lot of different techniques that 
different interview techniques that uh, companies will use. So it could be one-on-one, -on -one, it could be a panel interview where you have to talk to multiple people. Uh, you could be talking to a panel and another expert or a, or a mentor or someone that you may be working alongside. Uh, so different levels within the organisation because there'll be different questions coming at you from different levels. Uh, it may be it may be that you have to go through multiple levels. I, I know of one company in the IT industry where there are not, uh, nine interviews to get through before you um, are allowed to, before you're offered a job. So the first few are psychometric evaluation. Then there's a couple that they have with uh, management, for example, so line manager and then upper level management. And then you would do a few interviews with some technical staff that you might be working alongside. And then uh, there would be some HR interviews and then you might eventually get given the job if you can navigate that. So as you can imagine, that's quite a onerous process, quite difficult. Uh, some interviews require practical content. So they will ask you numerous questions about things or provide you a scenario and you need to be able to work through it. So it's very important that uh, if you haven't done those sorts of things before that you search out these resources to be able to assist you with getting to the stage where you're competent in, in progressing through that process. Uh, and job search strategies. So uh, everyone I'm, I'm presuming has seen things like Seek and My Career, those sorts of uh, uh, job advertisement uh, websites. There are many others and there are many, many uh, companies that will assist you, and I put that in inverted commas, in trying to find a job. And it's an absolute minefield to navigate through. Uh, so being, uh, being aware of the different types of strategies that you can use to find the right job for you and through the right place uh, can be um, very, very useful indeed. And that is, in, in CSU's case, as this particular website is the place to start for your career service. Uh, and you can contact them at any time um, and they'll be able to assist you in those points that we've spoken about. So as we spoke about last week as well, the teaching staff are there to assist you as well, obviously. Email and for forums are generally the primary contact method to contact those people. Uh, maybe an office, if they have one and you're on campus, you can walk up to the door. Some of them will have timetables on the door to tell you when you can come. Uh, others just allow you to walk in and, and have a bit of a chat quite easily. Some will provide their mobile numbers, as I said last week, but don't expect it. Their role is to guide you when you need help, but you have to ask for it first. Okay, they can't assume that they know. Um, often teaching staff will have large cohorts of students to teach, so it's your responsibility to have to go and ask for that help. And I think that's a really important thing to remember, particularly if you're a new school leaver or you haven't been uh, you haven't been in a learning capacity for quite some time, is that you need to ask for assistance. Um, primary and secondary school, obviously we're spoon fed a lot. Once it gets to tertiary education, it's really up to you to decide where you want to go and how far you want to take it and how successful you want to be will be driven by your um, organisation, your motivation and how readily you are to ask questions. And then your peer supported learning as well. So again, this is um, learning from other students and it can be from forums which are official university forums uh, or they can be through social media study groups that you have uh, maintained or initiated yourself. You can use Skype, you can use the library peer advisors as I said last week there are specific staff at some university position in the library to be able to assist you with whatever question you may have. Um, there's plenty of help around, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. There's plenty of people to ask. There's plenty of resources available. You just have to make the effort to go and ask those questions. Um, and particularly, peer supported learning is often very underutilised, particularly in an online environment, because when, when you're on a you know, on-campus situation and you're going to classes every day and you've got tutorials and you've got lectures and you get that social interaction going face-to-face, -face, it's quite easy to strike up a discussion with members of your cohort about what you've just seen in a lecture or what's involved in a particular assignment. And in, in particularly in, in, in some particular areas of, of uh, some particular 
uh, courses, you'll be expected to do group um, assessments. So it might be a group presentation or it might be a group practical or whatever the case may be. And so that that um, initiates and facilitates that peer learning process. However, in an online environment, uh, it's much less prevalent and still underutilised, even for, dare I say, IT students who are the ones that I typically teach at master's level. Many of them do not engage in the forums that we provide them through IT masters. Um, some of them do, some of them don't, and that's that's a pretty constant sort of thing. Uh, but I think as I mentioned back in week one or week two, uh, there are numerous research studies that have shown that if you engage in forums and engage in this peer learning, you can significantly raise your end grades at the end of uh, at the end of the uh, session, semester, year, course, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it. So it's definitely worthwhile. And just some final thoughts before I hand over to Neil. Um, education should be fun. In fact, to me, I think it, it must be fun. It must be something that you enjoy doing. You must get fun out of it. You must get knowledge out of it. You must, you know, get wherever you want to go with it, you must be able to get there. If it's not fun, it becomes boring, it becomes a chore, you stop doing it. So make sure that you know you enjoy what it is that you're doing. Pick something that you're going to enjoy doing. Because without that fun component, it's going to be hard it's going to be a hard slog. You also need to have a goal. Now no goal is too big or too small. You may just have a goal to pass all your subjects, just get through. Okay, just get out the end of it with your degree or your masters or whatever the case may be, and that's fine. Other people like to drive themselves more, they want to get the best marks all the time. Okay, or it may be that there's a particular year that you want to focus on or a particular set of subjects that you really want to focus on. Whatever the case is, make sure that you've got a goal. So you need a big picture goal for the end. What are you going to do once you finish university, once you've got your degree or your master's or your PhD? What are you going to do with it? Where's that going to take you? You need to know need to know that. But you also need to set little sub-goals all the way along. If you were to just look at your big picture goal from the start, it becomes overwhelming, it's very daunting. You need to make sure that you've got little steps all the way through and part of those little steps are setting goals for individual assessments, individual subjects, individual semesters and each year as you go along. And if you can do that, not only will you provide yourself with uh, a focus and a small set of steps that you can easily take, but it'll also give you confidence in that when you reach those little goals, you can look back and say, hey, I'm meeting those goals, I'm meeting my expectations, I'm ticking all the boxes. And so it drives you forward, keeps you motivated, keeps you happy. Do what you love. Easy to say, can be really difficult to do, but the more fun you can have out of it, the more enjoyment, uh, the more love you have for the subject you're studying or the degree you're studying, the easier it's going to be and the more you'll get out of it. There's no need to struggle, help is nearby. Use every single available service that you possibly can, even if you're not sure whether you need it or not, ask the question. Go to the website, make a phone call, send an email, whatever you have to do, find out whether the service can benefit you and if it can, use it. Don't be afraid to use it. These services are here to use. Don't feel, it's like um, asking for extensions, I always say to my students, ask for an extension even if you're not sure whether you really need it or not. Why? Because the process is there to assist you. Um, and we all get busy with different things in our life, so it's really important that you use these resources to help keep you on track, help keep you balanced, help keep you on the job. And lastly, a couple of quotes which I like to talk about. Um, so one by ex-president of the United States who said, man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. And so what he's basically saying there is, dream big, aim high, and you'll succeed. Have a go. Okay, so your future, your ability to succeed at university is really only limited by your own thoughts. So get out there and attack it, enjoy it, and shoot for the stars and you should be fine. Okay, so that's the end of what I wanted to say. I'll just hand over to Neil, uh, who will drive you a bit, give you a bit more information on a few things. And uh, while Neil's um,
talking. If you want to start sending through any questions that you may have, uh, we can answer them once Neil's finished. So Neil, uh, over to you. Okay, thanks Matt. Uh, thank you Matt and Chantel for sharing all your knowledge. I've enjoyed uh, um, the last few weeks. I hope everyone else has. I'll just see if I've got the right screen I'm showing here. So you should see a picture of my ugly dial there and with introduction. Anyway, so I work with Charles Sturt Uni and IT Masters. IT Masters has presented this short course and many other technical and non-technical short courses we run. I'll explain what the, my little session is about so you can decide if it's worthwhile for you. I'm going to talk about postgraduate study for IT people and we also run project management courses for people who are not in IT or maybe in IT. I will send out my details if you're not interested in that area to everyone who's enrolled so you might want some details on other courses. I can direct you to someone who can help you personally. So IT Masters, you're here at Charles Sturt and Uni um, University and IT Masters. What we do for the uni, we market the programs to IT industry and for project management courses. So we go to trade shows, we run these short courses for everyone and that helps the university get more numbers which is what it's all about. We also make sure people do the right course and it's suitable for them. We look at opportunities for new courses. We have a new course next year, Master of Cloud Computing and Virtualization and I know there are others on the, on the book for the year after. We also have people like Matt, excellent presenters who run specific techni technical courses or project management subjects on behalf of the uni. These are related basically to our industry certification. So on a master's which is 12 subjects or a graduate certificate which is four subjects, half of the subjects will be based usually on industry certifications relevant to that master's. So for example we're running a virtualization subject for a technical person, we would find a VMware or a very a technical person who can run that subject as well as the normal university academic subjects that are part of all courses. So half of our courses are based on industry certifications. It might be for the networking, it might be Cisco CCNA or some ba basic Microsoft um, um, subjects or VMware or virtualization. And I'll send out details of all the courses that we run which may help you. As I just mentioned, six subjects or six industry certification subjects on a master's three sessions a year. If you're working full time I would recommend one or two subjects a session. That would be a full time workload. You probably want to be doing 10 to 12 hours a week study for a subject. So if you're doing two you're looking at you know 20 to 24 hours of study and you have to find that time. And you can decide each session whether you want to do one subject or two subjects or take leave that session because you're busy with other things. So we try and be as flexible as we can with you. Graduate certificates similar to the masters, four subjects out of the masters. You could do that in eight months and then you could move on to the corresponding masters and keep the subjects that you've already completed as completed so you're not doing any extra subjects that way. That's what articulates means. It's the university speak for keeping your subjects on a lower course, making them move up to the higher course as completed. Now just the range of courses we run, the technical courses around networking, systems admin, security, probably our biggest course now. We have a mobile applications development course, making mobile apps whether it's games or business applications. We take people who've got development experience or we will teach people how to use development tools to make mobile apps. Each has a corresponding graduate certificate. We also have a new one we brought out last year, a graduate certificate in industry computing. You don't know what you want to do, you can pick four subjects from a range of different courses and the common subjects if you moved into a master's after that would be credited. 
Then you have the more business type of courses, the Master of Management or the MBA in Computing. They have business subjects such as managing people, managing finances, managing change, as well as some technical certifications relevant to the technical area. Similarly, all 12 subjects that I mentioned before. The Master of Project Management, similar subjects to the technical ones, but these are for non-technical or technical people. They will have the managing people, finances change, as well as more specific project management subjects on life cycle. As I said, I will send all this out to everyone. I think the last four weeks have basically been around what you need to study, what support you need, finding time. And we support the learner at CSU by many different ways. All your textbooks are supplied. You have student liaison officers to assist you if you get stuck. And a lot of this information is around Interact 2, which has sample exams. You can see a month before the session starts when your assessments are going to be, what they are, whether it's all assessments or is there a final exam. Interact 2, which um, Matt did a lot of examples of, when you first log in as a student, there's a short online study um, session, mini course that will teach you how to go through everything in Interact 2 and get the best out of it. So it does depend on your experience level. I said 10 to 12 hours, sometimes a subject you've got a lot of experience in, you could probably reduce that or something that's very, very new to you or you want very, very high marks, you could spend more than that. So that's the general guide the university is using. Admission requirements. If you've got a bachelor, if you're the IT courses, first of all, if you've got a bachelor degree in some IT discipline, you're fine, you'd be admitted. If you've got a bachelor's degree in something else, but have at least two years industry experience in IT, I could get you into any course. Similarly for the project management course, a bachelor degree or at least five years work experience. But I've helped many, many hundreds of people get into their masters, graduate, some are moving on to higher level doctorate courses. So I'm a good resource to talk to. There's a form on our site if you want me to email you. I can give me your details, tell me what you've done, what subjects you might have done at uni before, tell me what technical certifications you have, and I'll send you all the details, the cost, how, how long it might take you, what credit opportunities you might have to reduce the number of subjects that you do. So you'll see that on our main site. Credit. So sometimes you mightn't have to do the 12 subjects or the four subjects on a graduate certificate. There's a few ways you can get credit. There's industry certifications that are matched to the masters that you would do. As I said before, if you did a networking masters, Cisco CCNA, Cisco CCMP, they're one or two credits. And there's a range of courses that I'll also, I'm sorry, certifications that I'll send you that have been approved already for credit. You might have something that's a, that we haven't thought of because there's millions of certifications. So we would assess your other certifications for possible credit. You might have studied previous academic, done another master's as a similar subject. We'd look at that as well for credit. We have a 10 year rule because things do change. So any academic studies that you might have done to match our subjects, we'll look at credit for you. We run very technical short courses like we did, to, like this is a return to learning short course, but we also run very technical ones on VMware, a range of project management, and you'll see them on our site. If you pass any of those, they have exams, usually four or five weeks. If you pass them in the exam period, and it doesn't matter what area it covers, doesn't have to relate to your course, if you pass three in the exam period, we would give you a subject credit. So that already reduces your 12 to 11 or your four subjects on a grad cert to three. And we have many students who have taken that up. Again, I can help you on that. Maximum credit, 
we can't give you 12 or 11, we can only give you six maximum on any course. You have to do some work to gain this, this qualification. Free short courses, please jump on there, whatever you are in. We probably have a short course that you can do. You can view past ones for gaining more knowledge or you can do some future ones. We, I think we have a Amazon one coming up, a VM one coming up. Pass three of those before you graduate and that'll save you $3,000. Three sessions a year, two, the session one and two are 16 weeks long. Session three over Christmas is a bit shorter. You can start at any time. Not every subject runs every session, but we'll always find a subject for you. And our major core subjects are available most sessions. So our fees, if you're an Australian resident or citizen, you would get charged $3,000 per subject. You would be charged each session for the number of subjects that you do. So you might do one, you'd be charged 3000 That includes all your materials, everything. There should be no other fees that you'd be charged for. In Australia, I know all fees are tax deductible and they should be tax deductible for you and there's no GST on learning. Australian citizens, Oh, the census date before I go on. The census date is four weeks into a session. If you find you just can't cope that session for a whole lot of variety of life reasons, you can pull out and not be charged for that subject. Or you might find the subject really not the one, not the best elective you could have chosen and you're really not getting much benefit. Pull out, take leave that session. It'd be too late to change into another subject. But take leave that session and not get charged for it. So there is a, it's a safeguard for people. All universities will have that. Australian citizens get an interest-free loan. They pay it back on their on their tax, and they don't start until you're earning at least fifty-four thousand. That's part of the application process. When you get your fill-in application online, the university sends you an offer. Says yes, you can start. They'll ask you how you're paying for it. You give you give them your tax file number, and you would pay that back over time. I've got more details if you have questions on that as well. So that's our outcomes. You'd get a Masters University qualification. It's very, very important. I see very senior roles are asking that. They're using that as a shortlist process. If you haven't got one or not doing one, you're just not going to get an interview. You also get preparation for a lot of industry certifications. You can do them later if you wish outside of the university. I'll just check if we've got any questions from that brief overview and as I said, I'll send you much more information. None of my little topic, this one, uh, no, I'll let Chantal answer that in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to email everyone with my details. I'll give you my, um, there's a chat, you can chat, on, chat to me online, you can email me, you can phone me and we'll go from there. So that's all I wanted to do, Matt. I'll hand it back to you, if I can. <laughs> um, <laughs> so one of the questions that we had just while we're handing that over and trying to work out um, these sort of systems is how can I study using social media with people? And that always depends on the group that you're studying with and what social media they prefer. I've seen people um, start up with like a hashtag that they use while they're um, watching the webinar on Twitter or Facebook groups are always a great option because people can go there and search through it. So it is important to remember that with social media, if you're studying via social media, um, a lot of that is organised by you, the student. So while teachers might create their own Facebook group, you're, um, you're free to do so, particularly if you use Facebook a reasonable amount and you think other students might benefit from it. Um, but be aware, if the teacher's not in that group, then it will be unmonitored by the, um, the university itself. So it's always important to remember that. Um, and the other one there was asking how do I apply for a government study loan? 
Um, I don't know if Margie might be best to to cover that one, Margie. Um, from what I understand, it usually happens around fee time. Um, if you're an Australian citizen, HEX um, or fee help or whatever it's still currently called. Basically what happens is is that after uh, you receive your offer of admission from CSU, uh, during the online acceptance process, first you accept your offer, then you fill out an online form um, and you know just have your tax file number ready. Uh, the, uh, for, fill out the form for um, Commonwealth support. It's very quick. Um, you'll be done in a jiffy. Yeah, that's guaranteed for all citizens. It's just a matter of fact. You just get it if you want it. And that one really is a great system. I uh, can't see many other questions. Um, if you start a course and find it very hard to understand the accent of the teacher, can you stop the course? Um, it is an interesting question. Uh, obviously, if it's an elective, like Neil was saying before, you can withdraw um, before census date. Uh, if it is a core subject, you can ask if there'll be a different mentor at some other stage. Um, uh, it all depends on how each specific course is run and how often you know it's run, whether they have different mentors for different times. Um, and then the other option is just to ask for more written information if you find out that the mentor is going to be running it next session as well. But that is when um, it is also really important to keep an eye on census date. And that's um, it sometimes it's just you don't um, think you learn very well from another mentor, from a lecturer's way of teaching and you would prefer someone else. Or at the same stage, just um, you don't have the time at that moment to dedicate enough time for a subject. Uh, Neil here. I've only ever run across that once. I spoke with the student to the CSU course coordinator and we organised an alternate subject that suited the student. Um, I think I've said it a few times during this um, short course, is if you are having a problem, your best thing to do is to contact somebody at the university, either the lecturer if that's appropriate, or if you're doing an IT master's course, we've got a, a, um, an area just for this sort of thing. Contact them sooner rather than later. You'll find most universities are really understanding about things, um, and if you contact them, particularly if you contact them early and, and nice about it, most people will, will try very hard to find a solution for you that suits. I always think we need uh, some sort of special notification that if people are typing a question or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, and we're just sitting here with no... Um, <laughs> with no noise in the background, so people think maybe we've all left. So I'm not seeing any more questions come up. Um, well, like Neil said, he'll be emailing all of you with details for eligibility and for the courses, for his details and for the courses that we run, which can be a really great starting point, particularly eligibility. Um, if you fill that out, Neil will have a really good understanding of where you're at and what you're looking for in your course, which can help him um, understand the best options for you. All right, thanks, Chantel. Oh, sorry. Yep. I was just going to say. Right. I was just. <laughs> just yeah, just going to say. The, the two people presenting. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't look like we've got any more questions. Um, so thank you, Neil, uh, for that presentation, um, and thank you, Chantel and Margie, from my point of view, for assisting in the in the last five weeks. It's been a, a fantastic team effort. I hope that everyone that has attended has got something out of it. Um, you'll obviously still have uh, access to the course through the um, 
the MOOC portal if you want to go back and have a look at these webinars, have a look at the lecture notes and the other resources that we've provided. Uh, if there's any questions from my point of view, if there's any questions that you have of me in particular, you always feel feel free to email me at any time and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can with hopefully a, uh, an answer for you, whatever the question may be. So uh, Chantel or um, Neil, if, if you, you guys got anything to add? Yeah, I'm finished, yep. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, thank you very much everyone for your attendance and again thank you to Chantel and Neil and Margie over the last five weeks. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we'll sign off for now but as I said feel free to contact us if you need anything into the future. Thanks very much and bye for now.